a complicated relationship with drugs and alcohol, a devastating diagnosis caught just in time, and involvement in a shocking murder trial. The Munster star Butch Patrick has faced his fair share of issues off-screen. For two seasons in the mid-1960s, the Munsters made Americans laugh at the antics of a wayward family of monsters living on Mockingbird Lane. The Munster family patriarch was Herman, a genuine Frankenstein monster married to a vampire named Lily. Also in the home was Lily's father, Sam Dracula, better known as Grandpa. The Munsters were raising their child, little Eddie, a werewolf, and their teenage niece, Marilyn the only normal person in the house. Butch Patrick landed the role of Eddie and instantly became a fan favorite when the Munsters first hit TV screens. But the actor also experienced some pretty serious issues after gaining international stardom on the iconic show. Of course, it's not unusual for former child stars to experience difficulties after landing in Hollywood, which sometimes leads to substance abuse issues. Plus, fame is a very fickle thing. Job opportunities can quickly evaporate, and a child actor might face typecasting if they're known for a particular role, which Patrick soon found out. Did you have to go and embarrass me in front of all of my friends like this? Butch Patrick was a little luckier than some of his child actor contemporaries in the 1960s. Unlike Ken Weatherwax, who played Pugsley Adams on The Addams Family, or Rusty Hamer, who played Rusty Williams on The Danny Thomas Show, Patrick was able to land roles after the Munsters ended. Though the frequency of his roles would wane over time, he was still making a decent career out of acting. After the final episode of The Munsters aired in 1966, Patrick garnered walk-on roles in many of the hit shows of the late 60s and 70s, including Gunsmoke and I Dream of Jeannie. But by 1974, Patrick's career on the small screen had faded away. His last credit until 1991 was a small part in an episode of Ironside. He was cast in two cameo roles in the early 1990s, marking his return to acting in 1991 with the film Scary Movie which had nothing to do with the successful franchise of the same name. And here come the Munsters in 1995. Butch Patrick? That's right. After a 1999 episode of The Simpsons, Patrick began working in the industry again more steadily. He played himself in the 2003 comedy Dickie Roberts, former child star, and has played roles in more than a dozen science fiction and horror TV shows and films since. His voice was used in the 2022 Rob Zombie film adaptation of The Munsters, and he has been working on several new projects currently in development. But like many former child stars, Patrick experienced addiction in his adult life. Butch Patrick began experimenting with drugs and alcohol at a young age. By the time he was 19, the actor decided that he enjoyed the partying lifestyle too much to give up, which meant that he ultimately decided to quit acting. During an interview with Owen, Patrick explained, I was functioning, but I wasn't th thriving. I was more of an existing situation, and it went on for 40 years. Patrick also pointed out an issue that often makes addiction worse for famous people, saying, Nobody ever tells celebrities no. Nobody told Michael Jackson no. Nobody told Elvis no. no they just don't want to say no because they want, they want you to be their friend. As a result, Patrick found that access to drugs and alcohol was too easy in the circles he moved in, and that asking for help was more difficult. The actor eventually checked himself into a rehab facility in New Jersey on November 21, 2010, and he has been clean and sober ever since. Patrick's decision to get clean may have been a catalyst for the additional work he earned in the decade that followed his successful completion of the rehab program. Doctors also made a discovery during his stay there that probably saved his life. When a person checks into rehab, they are routinely examined by doctors and other medical professionals. There was a doctor that was in there who fast-tracked me to his rock star ninja doctor buddies. It was during one of these exams that Butch Patrick was given some pretty serious news. One particular doctor noticed that Patrick had a lump on his prostate, and it was soon discovered that the actor had prostate cancer, as he revealed. And they found out that I had a real aggressive small mass on my prostate, and I had it removed. Fortunately for Patrick and his loved ones, the cancer was found and removed in time for him to make a full recovery. In his interview with Owen, Patrick credited checking into rehab with his survival. Had I not been getting sober, I would have ignored it. I wouldn't be sitting here, wouldn't be in this house, wouldn't be alive. It doesn't get much bigger than that. When 58-year-old Kenneth Yedis was shot and killed in 2006, his wife was charged with his murder. But Cindy Schultz Yedis had a defense team that pointed the finger at five other people who could have been responsible for her late husband's death. According to their accusations, revenge was the motive that drove them to murder. The Sun reported that Butch Patrick became acquainted with the Yedis couple when he made a 2006 appearance at their venue, Monster Hall Raceway. Soon after, the Yedises filed a lawsuit against a man named Randall Landwehr for $300,000, alleging fraud which the couple won. Following the case, Landwehr and other investors lost their 
Landwehr's stake in the company. Butch Patrick's mother had allegedly invested a sum of money in Landwehr's business endeavor, per WSAW7 News. The defense team argued that the actor, along with several other investors, had a motive for murdering Ken Yedis. With the headline that says Munster Murder Bombshell at Monster Hall. The accusation led to Patrick being summoned to court to testify. He revealed that he didn't know anything about the murder and had been traveling when it happened. Additionally, forensics tests didn't show any connection between Patrick and any of the evidence found at the crime scene. The jury later found Cindy Schultz-Yedis guilty of first-degree murder in October 2021.